Hello, this is still Dr. Omende. So we continue with our um, series of histology lectures. This is on histology of the kidney. We had already discussed the components of the filtration um, filtration barrier, where we talked of the endothelium of penetrative capillaries within the glomerulus, and this endothelial cell on the basement membrane. Then we also have the basement membrane. These are the fused basement membrane plus of the capillaries and the podocytes, between the pedicels and the podocytes filtration area. So um, this is under an electron microscope. You can appreciate the pedicels of the, of the podocytes. So a renal corpuscle has a vascular pole and urinary pole, an outer simple squamous parietal layer, um, layer made up of the, the podocytes, and then this is your proximal convoluted tubule from the urinary pole. And we said the apparent has a uh, larger diameter compared to the efferent arterial. And appreciate the filtration membrane where you have capillaries, uh, penetrated capillaries with the endothelial, line, line, endothelial cells lying on the basement lamina, and the podocytes also lying on the basement lamina, and the filtration fluid between them good processes or cytoplasmic extensions of the podocytes, those from the filtration membrane. And then electron microscope, this is how it looks like. This is a glomerular capillary. Postquamous endothelium of the fenestrated capillary lying on the basement uh, basal lamina. And then you have your podocytes lying on the basal lamina and the slits between the podocytes. So again, the filtration membrane is composed of capillary endothelium lying on basal lamina podocytes lying on basal lamina, so the two fused basal lamina form a basement membrane. Then we also have the put processes with the podocytes, and in between the put processes you have filtration slits. So this is what forms the uh, filtration barrier. You can appreciate the pores that lack diaphragms, the pores of the fenestration capillaries which lack diaphragms. Again, under an electron microscope, the podocytes lying on the basal lamina, capillary endothelial cells lying on the basal lamina, Together, the fused basal lamina will form basement membrane. You can appreciate the fenestrations that lack diaphragms, fenestrations of the glomerular capillaries. So we have what we call mesangial cells. So these mesangial cells, um, where are they located? They are usually um, within the glomerular, but you also find others outside the glomerular. So you can find them within the capillary tufts of the glomerula. We call them intraglomerular mesangium, and at the vascular pole, and form part of the glomerular apparatus. So these ones we call them juxtaglomerular mesangium. They are found at the vascular pole and form part of the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So state five functions of the mesangial cell. They contain maintain glomerular basement membrane by phagocytosis of molecules that are trapped. So any molecules that are trapped within the glomeruli after filtration, they are uh, phagocytosed by these mesangial, intraglomerular mesangial cells. They also help to synthesize extracellular matrix, hence giving structural support. Mesangial cells are contracted. They have receptors for angiotensin II. Therefore, when activated, they are able to cause a reduction in the glomerular flow. They also have receptors for natriuretic factor. And remember this natriuretic factor a vasodilator. So uh, it's a vasodilator, a true natriuretic factor. So it's usually a um, vasodilating um, factor that is produced by the cells of the atrium of the heart. So these um, receptors ensure that the mesangial cells are able to relax. Therefore, this increases the blood flow and surface area for filtration. So when they are relaxed, the surface area of filtration is increased and the blood flow is also increased because of the vasodilation. Then, mesangial cells produce chemical mediators such as cytokines and prostaglandins. So those are the functions of mesangial cells. Phagocytos molecules trapped in the glomeruli, synthesize extracellular matrix for structural support, have receptors for angiotensin II. Therefore, they can um, cause a reduction in glomerular flow because they are contracted. They also have receptors for actual natriuretic factor produced by the heart atrial cells. Therefore, when they relax, you get to 
vasodilate and increase blood flow into the glomerulus and also increase the surface area for filtration. The sangio cells produce cytokines and prostaglandins. So this is your renal corpuscle and um, the sangio cells can be found within the, the, the glomerulus and also at the vascular core. So if you look here, this is the location of your extraglomerular mesangial cells. In between the capillaries, you have your extraglomerular mesangial cell. These are the podocytes. These are capillaries, fenestrogenous capillaries lying on basal lamina. The podocytes on the basal lamina leads to filtration barrier. Again, this is a mesangial cell. You can see it here within the, the glomerulus. So when a filter gets dirty or molecules are trapped, they usually clean by mesangial cells. So mesangial cells are the genitals. So you can appreciate this mesangial cell nucleus. So we go to the proximal convoluted tubule. Proximal tubule, proximal tubule has a convoluted and a straight portion. So what are the functions? 80% of glomerular filtrate is reabsorbed at the proximal tubule. So water, ions, glucose, amino acids, more proteins, they're able to be reabsorbed for you. You recover them back in the blood. So if they had been filtered into the provisional urine, you can recover them back. Then there's also active transport of sodium and chloride with water following pericellular and transcellular routes. So there's active transport of these ions and water at the proximal uh, tubule, and there's secretion of creatinine and some um, dyes or drugs within the blood. So you're able to secrete them um, at the proximal tubule. So what's the epithelial lining of proximal tubule? Simple cuboidal epithelium. And it has a, a microvilli on the apices of the epithelial cells, giving it a brush border appearance. So as we see simple cuboidal epithelium with brush on the apices. The cells also have basal striations and lateral interdigitations. These lateral interdigitations are a characteristic of um, ion transporting cells. They Proximal convoluted tubule cells have prominent endocytic apparatus such as pinocytic vesicles, vacuoles, and lysosomes. And they are have a close proximity to peritubular capillaries, capillaries around the tubule. So these are the brush border of the proximal convoluted tubule. Again, if you to look here, the proximal convoluted tubules, how do you tell the difference between proximal convoluted tubule and the distal convoluted tubule? Both have simple cuboidal epithelium, but if you see brush border or apical microvilli, that means you have the proximal convoluted tubule. Without microvilli, you know that's a distal convoluted tubule. You can see the renal corpuscle here with the Bowman space. Okay, so these are the glomeruli, the penetration glomeruli. These are the medullary rays. When you see that, that's your collecting tubule. Again, your renal corpuscle has the Bowman space. Simple squamous paraffin layer, visceral layer, tuft of capillaries. So, with presence of simple cuboidal with brush border, proximal convoluted tubule, brush border, brush border, brush border. So, simple cuboidal, one layer of cells that are as tall as they are wide. So, from the proximal convoluted tubule, we said proximal tubule has convoluted and straight portions. Then, um, usually they have simple squamous epithelium with cross. Uh, Close, sorry, uh, simple cuboidal epithelium with uh, brush border, glomeruli, parietal layer of the Bowman's capsule. We see it has simple squamous, while the capillary endothelium are also simple squamous. Then, uh, distal convoluted tubule, simple cuboidal with no brush border. Then, when you come to loop of Henle, simple squamous and they have close proximity to Vasarex. So, these are the thin looms of thin looms of loop of and the simple squamous epithelial lining. So the thin loop has simple squamous epithelial lining. The, um, this is the distal convoluted tubule usually close to the vascular pole and the distal tubule also has straight and convoluted portions and lined by simple cuboidal epithelium however they lack uh, a brush border. They may have short microvilli but they lack brush border. So again, they also have lateral interdigitation, basal striations, and abundant mitochondria. And these are features of an ion transporting cell. Lateral interdigitation, basal striations, and abundant mitochondria. 
they have very little endocytic activity, unlike the PCT where we saw endocytic vesicles. But of note is that DCT has active transport of sodium and bicarbonate. They also have close proximity to peritubular capillaries, and DCT cells correspond to uh, aldosterone. So aldosterone causes an increase in sodium reabsorption at the distal convoluted tubule following the renin and geotensin aldosterone system. Okay. So simple keyboardal epithelium, if you can look at the center and like PCT, there's no brush border. The center is clear. No apical microvilli or minimal few. You can barely see them. So simple keyboard of one layer of cells that are as tall as they are wide. So distal convoluted. distal convoluted um, tubules, okay? Glomerulus here, proximal convoluted tubule with brush border. This is possibly a distal convoluted tubule, simple keyboard with no brush border. So at the um, distal tubule, we have what are called macular denser cells. Macular denser cells are tall, narrow cells on the wall of distal convoluted tubule. And these are at the place where the distal convoluted tubule contacts the apparent arterial. So this is a distal convoluted tubule where it um, at the vascular pulmonary and the afferent arterial. So the cells of the distal convoluted tubule are tall and narrow, and these are what form the macular denser cells. Look here, tall and narrow cells of the distal convoluted tubule. So these are the macular denser cells. Again, macular denser cells, this is your distal convoluted tubule. This is definitely your glomerulus, your Bowman's capsule, parietal layer of simple squamous. Again, columnar cells of the distal convoluted tubule, this is definitely macular denser cells. So we have what you call the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So what are the components of juxtaglomerular apparatus? Macular denser cells of the distal tubule, these are able to detect sodium levels. So if sodium is elevated in, in um, if you have elevated sodium, it will trigger contraction of afferent arterioles. Okay. So um, when urine gets to the distal convoluted tubule and this urinary uh, secretion has high sodium, it will cause the afferent arterioles to, to, um, to contract. Then we have juxtaglomerular cells. These are modified smooth muscle cells of the um, arterial wall. Modified smooth muscle cells of the arterial wall, and they produce renin in response to a drop uh, in response to a drop in BP or sodium in the DCT. So when sodium in the DCT um, is low, or when blood pressure is low, juxtaglomerular cells will produce renin, and renin will lead to more sodium reabsorption to increase the volume of blood. So, uh, and that occurs at the DCT. Therefore, you activate the renin angiotensin aldosterone system. Then we also have the extra glomerular mesangial cells, and we've already tackled the functions of mesangial cells. So, juxtaglomerular apparatus have macular denser cells of the DCT, the tall cells. Juxtaglomerular cells modified smooth muscle cells of the arterial that produce renin and extra glomerular mesangial cells or lysis cells. So when blood pressure is low or sodium in blood is, uh, uh, sodium in DCT is low, what happens? Juxtaglomerular macular denser cells will sense, cause juxtaglomerular cells to produce renin and this renin is going to cause uh, a vessel constriction to increase blood pressure and also going to cause aldosterone production to increase sodium reabsorption thereby you raise the blood pressure. So this is your juxtaglomerular apparatus made of macular denser cells, the tall columnar cells of the DCT, extraglomerular mesangial cells, and you have the juxtaglomerular cells. These are smooth muscle cells of the afferent arterial, modified smooth muscle cells of the afferent arterials from juxtaglomerular cells that produce renin. So basically, um, then you have your collecting tubules, okay? that's empty into the straight collecting tubule. So uh, next we discuss the collecting duct.